Hi there, my name is Joy Morin, and I am a piano teacher and a blogger at colorinmypiano.com. So I want to talk a little bit about a quote um, that I shared on my blog recently, and that quote is, I'm still learning. This quote is kind of remarkable because of who it comes from, for one thing. Um, it's from Michelangelo, and to think about such an incredible artist, um, stating this and embodying this attitude that he was still learning, I think is incredible. Especially knowing that these, um, from what I found online, were his last words before he passed away. So even at a point in his life where he's looking back on everything he's done, and um, he obviously enjoyed a, a, a long and wonderful career, um, he still has this feeling and, and atti attitude uh, towards life that he's just still always learning. There's always more to learn. <clears throat> so I just think that's really remarkable and really beautiful. So I want to talk a little bit about how this quote um, applies to teaching situations, um, in particular for piano teachers. So first of all, this idea of I'm still learning, I think is a wonderful thing for teachers to embody and strive for as well. And I think many of us do. I mean, the reason that we become teachers is often because we just love the learning process so much and we love being around learning and making it happen in others. Um, so this is maybe easy for a lot of us, um, but in any case, it's worthwhile to talk about and think about how we can kind of pass it along to our students as well because I think that's a wonderful thing if we can help them keep this attitude that um, there's always more to learn um, in life. So one of the ways we can do that, I think, is in the lesson time with the student, rather than kind of taking on any kind of airs or assuming that we as the teacher have all the answers, instead we can kind of come alongside the student, position ourselves as, as kind of maybe a coach uh, but still like alongside the student, figuring things out with them. As we troubleshoot problems, we figure out how to learn a passage, how to um, fix mistakes, um, how to figure out how to uh, form an interpretation for a piece of music, things like that. I, I would much rather position myself as like the, a detective right alongside with my students. And yes, I might have more experience and more expertise in certain ways. It's still, I wanna kind of, um, give the students still enough of uh, their own kind of power to explore those things and develop their own skills in those areas and just kind of come alongside them in, in that journey rather than just kind of give, giving them the answers. It's not about the teacher bestowing the, uh, this knowledge that's in, in um, your head, in, like into the student's head and transplanting it or something, but it's more about helping the students teach themselves almost. So um, I think having that, that attitude in the lessons of figuring things out together, and um, sometimes I don't know the answers to things, and, and I, I'm happy to admit that to students. I, I'm not sure about this. Um, it could be this, it could be this, why don't we try this? So we try lots of different things sometimes. Um, and sometimes something works right away, and sometimes it doesn't. But I just uh, enjoy kind of um, framing things in that way. So, yeah, and I, and I really feel that's true for me. As a teacher, I'm always still learning. There's never going to be a point where I feel like I have all the answers and I know exactly what to do in every situation. Uh, so part of it is just simply a reality, um, but it's a good reality, I think. <laughs> um, and then finally, I think just um, thinking about the professional developments uh, kind of opportunities that, that we take advantage of. Now, this, this could be just reading books. Um, this could be even following the different discussions going on in um, groups online, discussion groups on Facebook or, or whatever platform. There's so much we can learn from reading the experiences of other teachers and reading the advice that's given there. Uh, it can also be attending events, going to a conference, going to um, a workshop, a local meeting of your music teachers association, um, uh, taking an online course, things like that. And very often, I, when I come back to, from things like that, I like to share with my students um, when something comes up in their lesson time that's relevant to something I picked up at a conference, for example, I like to let them know, um, let's try something. I just, I just learned this idea from a teacher while, while I was at the conference, you know. 
and I kind of let them know um, that I do these kinds of things and that I do them because I want to be a better teacher and I want to be able to pass these things on to my students and help them improve. I like for them to know that. I actually have some strong memories of my band teacher growing up who, very, who would do this. He would let us know he went to whatever thing and um, he had new ideas that he experimented with us and we knew where they came from. And I always admired him for that. So um, I try to do the same to my students because of that, because I, f I just found it inspiring that he was always striving to improve himself. Um, you know, no matter how old you are or how long you've been at your career, um, we can keep learning and improving all the time. And there's nothing to be ashamed about with that or anything. In fact, I think it's something to be proud of. <clears throat> so those are just a few thoughts about how I think this quote is um, kind of useful for us teachers to think about and how we can pass this along to our students. Um, I think there's more ways this could be applied. So if you're thinking of other ideas, uh, other ways that this relates to your teaching experiences, please share those in the comments below and I'd, I'd love to discuss this quote further uh, with you guys. So, um, and then just one little pitch here at the end. If you're looking for some kind of professional development thing, um, uh, I have an online course that's going to be starting soon for piano teachers. It's basically a piano pedagogy course. It combines what I feel I gained from the different pedagogy classes that I took during my college years, and plus the practical things about teaching that I think, that I felt personally were not covered in my pedagogy classes. And that, so I tried to find ways to combine all of that, and I created a six-week course. So if that interests you, please visit institute.joymorin.com and you'll find information there and you can get on the email list. The second thing is I'm hosting a piano teacher retreat here at my house this summer. It's going to be August 1 through 3. Uh, I've done it for two years now. This will be our third year and I'm very excited about holding it again with a different theme this time around. So if you'd like to check that out, there's information on my website for that, which is pianoteacherretreat.com. So those are two websites you can feel free to check out. And um, I thank you for listening and watching this video. Thanks.